Welcome to Unmuted. We got your gaming and esports hot topics, hot tweets, and the spiciest memes. Are you practicing? Yeah, I guess that's like a practice <laughs> slapping at that. Well, if you're not sure how this works, let's uh, break it down for you. We're going to present the uh, goodies that we've gathered, which we'll discuss and most likely argue it is Lisa and I after all. But lucky for all of us, there's this mute button that we have right here, which we can each press once to mute the other for a good 30 seconds. That's right. Remember, we love it when you call us out, when we're wrong and praise us, when we're spitting truth. So let's get right to it. Let's dive into our first story, which is about League of Legends and its most recent patch, which has broken broken the game on so many levels. Yesterday, patch 9.14 was released for League of Legends. This patch is one of the largest of the year, changing tons of champions and balancing loads of items. However, Riot had to shut down the ranked queue a few hours after launch after over a dozen champions were reported to have game-breaking bugs. Hotfixes have since fixed most of the issues, but there will likely be more bugs making their presence known over the coming days. AJ, some of the reported bugs, just to give you a little more context, is yeah. like Zed Shadow no longer throwing shurikens. Uh, Pike's ultimate actually killed one of his allies. And uh, I think Galio's E also, uh, it went through champions instead of knocking them up, which is what they're designed to do. Yeah. So a lot of game-breaking bugs. Yeah. Um, I think the big issue here is like it's uh, this patch was released right in the middle of a competitive season, LCS. Mm -hmm. All the leagues are happening right now. Um, do you think releasing patches like these is just a necessary evil of esports and gaming? Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, it's it's a difficult topic to discuss. My my big uh, thing with this is like, what happened at Riot? Like, wh <laughs> what led to all these problems? It's almost like the, all their production staff like got up and walked out one day or something. Yeah. Like, where? Oh, oh, wow. Well, that they got, did. They, that they did. They did for different reasons. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, but that's Sorry. a good point. Like, where was the testing? Why? Yeah. Are there how do you so put this stuff bugs? out without doing all this? You know, don't you have like your small beta crews and everything to f figure all this out? Like, there are there are instances of this sort of thing happening, but I I haven't heard of anything happening on this scale in a game as polished and professional as League of Legends yeah. before. So no, I think a lot of people were shocked. What? Um, if you were following, if you follow any League of Legends pros on like social, yeah, <laughs> already like at the moment the gate the patch went up. Broken. Yeah, everyone's yeah. like, ranked is down. What do I do with my life? Right, um, right. I have a conspiracy theory, though. Oh. So, the fact that ranked for League was down yeah. coincided with the fact that ranked for Teamfight Tactics was released. Coincidence? Is Teamfight Tactics also a Riot not. game? Yes, Teamfight Tactics oh. is like the auto chess. You know Dota has auto chess? No. Um, oh, okay, well, let me fill you in. Auto chess is like the hot card, kind of card game, chat auto game, where you basically you like upgrade cards and you make them auto battle and whoever's the last one standing wins. Okay. If you haven't played it, you should. Well, League released their own version of it, and it's within the League client, okay? Um, okay. But their ranked system for Teamfight Tactics just got released yesterday. At the same Sorry. time, it all went down, what guys. If we just break League our main game so people Hello? have to try the new game. That's exactly it. It's too know. coincidental, you guys. And kind of I follow Riot. a lot of streamers on Twitch. Literally, all of them were streaming Teamfight Tactics last night because League ranked was down. Interesting. Guys, Riot is marketing this so smart, I guess, kind of. They already I'm have a bad reputation. I'm too unmuted for the argument. Stay for the wild conspiracy theories. That's right. Here's another one for you. In Call of Duty drama, Face Sensor is alleging that he knows the identity behind the notorious leaker, Codburner. Dun, dun, dun. He pointed to multiple Twitter accounts, which he alleged are all run by Codburner. Sensor also called him a dangerous individual and said he will release a video this Friday detailing who he is and what he has lied about. Codburner is disliked in the Call of Duty community for leaking information on roster moves, which pros say hurts their value. So Lisa, do you think Sensor is in the right in this instance to reveal Codburner's identity to dox him yeah. Essentially, what and do you think? Here? I think it really depends on what side of the coin you fall on here, right? Obviously, Sensor is a uh, pro, and anyone in the Call of Duty scene as like a player or team manager, or whatever, right. they want to know this guy's identity. Yeah. But on the flip side, on our side, where we're like press and fans of the game, we kind of want to keep him around because Copburner One gives us such good intel before right. you know leaks. Obviously, as a fan, we love leaks. You know what I mean? As press, we love leaks, so we kind of want to keep him around. So this is kind of like a good and bad thing. Mm. I on one side, this is such good drama. Oh my god, this is I've never been this excited for a reveal mm -hmm. since I, I I don't know the gender reveal for Kim Kardashian's baby. I don't know. <laughs> I, 
<laughs> like, like this is huge. I have a maybe different perspective, and maybe that comes from not having been privy to so much of the drama surrounding Cod Burner. I'm absolutely familiar with who he is and what yeah. he's about, but I'm not all that up on the on the Cod scene. My FPSs of choice are like PUBG and Overwatch, obviously. Okay. Um, but I don't know how I feel about someone who is in such a position of power. Someone like Sensor doing this to someone who is essentially powerless, aside from utilizing the information that they have. This isn't someone who's making huge bucks as a pro player. Yes, Censored was mentioning, like, this guy's kind of being nefarious about where his money is yes. coming from. But ultimately, he is something who, someone who is using what power he does have to hold the powerful to account in certain ways AJ, through the power of information. No. I don't know if I'm no, fully no, no, on no, Carburner's no, no, no. side, but I, no, I would no, no, say... No. Okay, listen, AJ doesn't get it. Like, he even said he's not part of the scene, but... The Cod Burner has, as a, from the pro player side, they have like he has leaked information that has affected trades. Okay, he has leaked a lot of information that honestly hurt pros and esports teams. So this is a huge problem for their side. So I get why they want to know this guy and stop him from doing it. And with franchising coming up too. Look up, think of all the information that he could possibly leak. And you know what? Apparently he's very dangerous. Okay, I'm really diving into this hype. Like, I'm really excited. We don't know what he's doing. Uh, okay, is he so in drugs? Hold on a second, man. Because if you're talking about people being dangerous, who are the dangerous people in terms of what they could do to this person once his information is out there? It's a whole bunch of people with lots of money, lots of great connections. This is one individual who's been using this information, putting it out there. And whenever doxing happens, you've been on the internet just as much as I have. What's going to happen to this person when this information is leaked? It could be actual, real, physical danger, physical harm. Maybe not just to him, but to his family as well. There are a lot of people who take things way too far on the internet, and that is my my concern here when you release someone's information when they've already done this. There might be a better way to handle it. That's all I gotta say. To wrap this up, I actually messaged Sensor after he said that, like, oh. oh, I have the intel. I was like, yo, you found out the identity? Like, how did you do this? He's like, listen, Cobb Burner gets burned when he does stuff like this, okay? So, like, right. he is ready, and I am ready for the next story. Cool. So let's move on. The Overwatch League has seen a lot of players either retire or take steps back from active play because of injuries or personal issues. The latest is Seoul Dynasty's Munchkin, who is sitting out the rest of the season for undisclosed reasons. On the other hand, and, that's a funny joke. You have players like Stellar who retired months ago but have since come back to play. So AJ, what do you think is causing players, especially in Overwatch, it seems like there's a lot of Overwatch pros retiring, coming back yeah. um, in the middle of seasons. Like, why do you think this is so frequent in Overwatch? Well, I mean, you ultimately have teams that are more players than they end up playing. So a lot of people are just like on the bench, not doing their thing and saying like, okay, look, I'm not getting played. Yes, mm -hmm. you're paying me and it's cool, but I would rather be actively doing something and using my talents. So they're yeah. just retiring because they don't have an offer on the table, but they do want to make themselves a free agent and then uh -huh. being brought back, like Stellar, who was, of course, on Toronto uh, Defiant and is now with Boston Uprising. So mm -hmm. maybe that's the case, but also, yeah, it's a pretty stressful thing. Overwatch League is is huge. The you know the, the What's scene. the season again? It's Feb February, I think, to August, it no, seems like. Yeah, playoffs are going to wrap up in September. September, right, so, so it's, it's a good a chunk long of the year. Season, yeah, yeah, and I mean, there's there's lots of pressure on you. The, the matches can get pretty intense, and uh, the schedules, yeah. you know, a fair bit of travel. I guess a lot of it's in Los Angeles as well. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know whether we'll see a, a lot more of this or whether we'll see it hopefully decline with the new schedule next year. What do you think? Is this as prevalent in like League of Legends? I was and thinking other about that. I was like, is the OWL more strenu strenuous than other esports? Like, I mean, the season seems comparable, but what I wonder is the cause is maybe like Overwatch is a relatively new esport, right? But mm. it kind of got introduced at a time where esports was huge. There's already a lot of other established um, esports infrastructure, so Overwatch tries to like copy those kind of, I guess, infrastructure. Overwatch is like borrowing the esports infrastructure and the sports yeah. sports infrastructure and trying to find the like happy medium. And because of that, I wonder if the pros who are all young. Like they just got into Overwatch. Like they haven't had time to adjust like League of Legends pros who started from like when eSport wasn't even a thing yet yeah. up to this point. They didn't have the gradual well, growth. I've been working in this industry for now like 15 plus years. Oh yeah. my God, I'm so old. But yeah, I've seen a lot of like younger people who started out and then realizing, you know, after only working for a couple of years, like, oh, this isn't really what I want to be doing. And mm. that's just the thing mm. that comes with being new and figuring out who you are and what you want to be doing with life. Yeah. You're going to see that happen with a lot of these.
these pro players are in their early 20s. Yeah, and I think with Overwatch in particular, because it's so new, but there's so much money in it right now, mm -hmm. so much pressure, it's almost like they're not ready for it. They didn't have the time to get adjust to it. Yeah. That's why they're facing a lot of mental pressures, issue depression. We know a lot of players came out with, yeah. you know, they were depressed, they want to take a break. Like, this, for the Overwatch in particular, is a huge issue. Well, it's also, yeah, you're not, like, staying at home or, like, you know, no. having that opportunity to visit your family. When you're in Los Angeles for OWL, you're there for a yeah. while. Yeah, so. uh, for the foreign players, the ones who yeah. are a lot of Korean players, they had to yeah. move across the Relocate world, and, live in Los yeah. Angeles, not speak English, have to play under these circumstances. Yeah. Like, these are tough. your new friends. Enjoy. And that usually doesn't happen. It's tricky. It doesn't happen, yeah. All right, our last story, we're talking about quitters. Specifically, quitters who quit in the middle of matches. New data from Gosu AI and Dota 2 shows that at least one player quits a game in nearly 12% of matches. That's almost one in eight games. Of course, quitting mid-match also happens in other games like League of Legends and Overwatch, which I know all too well, and try as developers might to stop it, it's still a recurring problem. Lisa, do you think there's a way to curb this, or is this just something that's going to be around forever? This is interesting. I looked at the article, and there was a graphic, and it showed that in the lower levels of like ranked, you know, yeah, like the yeah. lower levels, this happens more often. So this kind of shows, you know, like in the, in the uh, I guess, lower ranks, new people are trying the game, they don't like it, they're gonna quit midway. You know, like it just, it makes sense logically. Yeah. But um, it's interesting in League of Legends because they actually change the patches a lot as we've talked about. Yeah. And sometimes they, I think someone recently, they added like more comeback mechanics. So basically, which oh. means is like, you know, if you play- If you've been penalized for having quit a lot, there's a easier way no, to like no, recover? Like in Game, they actually like if you're losing early, right. there's ways to get back into the game later on. Like they give you oh, more gold back. later on. Ah. Comeback mechanics. So that encourages people, like even if you're losing early game, uh -huh. there's a chance to come back. Because I think most people rage quit early because Ooh. they feel like there's no way to get back in the game. Like it's it's right. over. Like so might as well quit. This, yeah. Right? So League in it a way in has Overwatch done that. Overwatch as well, where you just get stomped on your, you know, you start the game on either attack or defense. And yeah. one way or the other, you've been completely demolished by the other team. And you, everyone on your team is going, <sighs> Now we got to play another 10 minutes of this game, which is clearly going to be a loss. And then people yeah. just don't even try. They pick characters that they know they're going to be playing badly as. Feeding. And it's just, yeah, it's yeah. just. I do that. I play so Hanzo when I know I'm about to lose. Oh, you're one of those people. Can I yeah. mute you again? For no! <laughs> I, I know, I'm one of those people. But like, it's interesting how League did that comeback thing, but I think yeah. a lot of people didn't like it. Because then it felt unrewarding to play a good early game. What's the right. point when someone can literally like beat you when you work so hard in the early game? Yeah. So like, even and League is, is trying to figure it out. In, you know, coming from the Overwatch background, there is something so satisfying when you are on that team that is just stomping the other team. And you're like, oh, these guys can't even get out of spot. We're having so so much fun. Does but when you're on good, the though? other side of it, it's just the worst Does feeling. Does that like, feel good though? When you stop uh, someone wanna... so easily, it's not even a match. It's like... It doesn't feel that, I mean, yeah. there's like a moment and then another moment, if you go past that that moment, then, yeah. then you're just sitting there going like, well. Doesn't feel as good. I don't, uh, I, yeah, I start sending messages to the other team saying like, sorry guys, I've been on yeah, the other side of this bad. so many times. Totally, totally. Yeah. Uh, we'll see if they can, you know, add something to fix it in the future. Yeah. And uh, also, a lot of the time the quitting problem isn't necessarily because the game's going bad, it's just like, Suddenly, Internet. oh, my game just crashed, or my power went out in my apartment, or my internet went down. Yeah, yeah, that's why I lose all my that's matches, why. too. Yeah. All right, right. <laughs> it's time to check in with streamers and clip it. Our first clip comes from Andy Milonakis. Actually, the star of the show is the stream sniper in the background. Should I spent like $1,500 on the room, and everybody like subbed and donated and stuff for the whole party and ended up like paying for the whole thing pretty much so that was really cool am i in long beach no i'm in i'm in koreatown in l.a don't worry, AJ, I'm not going to ask you to dance this time. We did oh, that in a good. former show. We yes. asked you to dance. Uh, we actually got a lot of complaints uh, okay. last time. It won't happen so, again. No more. No more twerking, AJ. I just can't believe Andy <laughs> didn't notice that that was happening behind him. But I think this isn't the first time that we've seen a clip from Andy Milanakis no. where something interesting was happening in the background. I think like someone was being pickpocketed in another clip oh in God. the background of one of his streams before, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that might have been a different streamer, but we actually had yeah him on the show a lot. He was, um, I think, witnessing a fight actually with another oh, streamer. Oh, a fight. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, he I guess he's a favorite of our show. But it's interesting how you know that's like content that you didn't ask for, but that's great. You yeah, know what I mean? It's always bonus when you get those little gems yeah. that are. Do so you ever shareable. get tempted to do stuff like that when you see someone like taking a selfie? Are you a selfie bomber? Like one of those people? Um. I can see it. 
Yeah, but I try to be subtle about it. Like, I don't want to do something obvious. I would rather have them, like, going through the photos and being like, look at this asshole in the background making the smug face or something, you know, that sort of thing, as yeah. opposed to Working doing something so obvious, you know? Yeah, but the smug face thing is too subtle. They might not they get might it. They might not, but when they do, they'll appreciate it. Oh. All right, our next clip <laughs> comes to us from Kevin Smith, who's trying to, uh, who's trying his hand at streaming, I should say, but having a little trouble not streaming. Hey, have a great day. Enjoy, and I'll see you I'll see you tomorrow. Well, it looks like they're not letting me leave. How do I end this? I was so, it was so smooth too. I was like, and I'll see you tomorrow. And I'm still here. <laughs> it won't, it won't end. Why won't it end? Stop it. I'm pressing the end button, it won't end. I want it to end properly. Oh man, what if I go like this? I can't, this is crazy. I can't get it to stop. All right, kids, I guess we're just gonna keep on streaming for the rest of the day. No, I gotta go. I'll see you later. That's so good. He figures it out eventually. But I have been in that exact same circumstance before on Instagram where you're like, okay, time to wrap up the live stream. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> There's an X, there's like an obvious, yeah. but like that's what you press to end the stream and it's just not responding and you're... <laughs> yeah. What do you do? Uh, Taking the bathroom? Uh, yeah. Da, 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 da. Uh, that's why you gotta wash your phone, AJ. Clean your phone, you nasty. It's probably because your sticky fingers. Oh, it's obviously that like the software is just hanging or not, not realizing that it's time to go or something. It's sure. Not, when you're pressing the button a bunch, it's, it's a software AJ, you're issue. you're so old. It's all right, it's truly the best time of the day when we troll through the Twitterverse to bring you all the things Pearls bless us from their timeline. All right, we got to give credit to Red Bull Esports for our very first post here because thanks to them, we got to see Ninja in a whole new light. La, 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 la. Yeah, for sure. Uh, AJ, maybe you're more familiar with that style of TV, considering you know you're from that era. How do you feel about that promo? <laughs> what? Ouch. Well, hold on, I gotta pull up my phone to Google the nearest burn clinic. <laughs> do you know how to Google one. a new? Oh, yeah. wow. Do you know how to Google? Like, that's... No, you can't. No, it's rules. <laughs> <laughs> I can keep chirping you. All right, you. we'll just move on. <laughs> Ah, oh, this next post truly encapsulates the segment Profound Thoughts, Call of Duty Pro. Saints tweeted out, you're telling me Mike was hard when he made this lemonade? Yeah, well, Mike, you just stay away from my lemonade. Make it extra sour. Oh! oh I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. Wow, you were on fire today, I Lisa. am disgusting today. <laughs> I'm sorry, everyone. <laughs> Don't show your parents a show. Uh, okay. This actually, that's funny because that reminds me of Brody. Brody has a slogan for his stream. I'm gonna call for him out, he stream? hates it when we do this. He uh -huh. streams and his slogan is, play hard. Or is it game hard? It might be play hard or game hard. But did he not think it through that this would have a dirty connotation when he came up with that slogan? Play hard. Yeah, okay. I he suppose. never streams, he doesn't he doesn't tilt the camera down, buddy. So well, you that's, guys. That's good yeah. for all of us. <laughs> play hard. That's enough of that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Move I on. love it. Move on. All right, the last profound thought started a pretty engaging debate on Twitter. Call of Duty Pro Zuma tweeted out. If you don't look out the window on a flight, you don't deserve the window seat. Mm. Ooh, do you agree or disagree with this very controversial topic? <laughs> I kind of agree. I mean, I've, I've flown so much, I found myself in the window seat where like, you know, I just flew yesterday. Like you kind of, once you've seen it, you're like, yeah, it's, that's the ground in there. But there's still something kind of magical. And for so yeah. many generations, people just dreamed of what it would be like to fly through the air. If you do have that window seat, I think you- it, AJ, you're so old. <laughs> For many generations, humans wanted to fly. Like They did. I know, 
was unimaginable until just a few hundred years ago. Not even that many hundreds of so years ago. In the 1800s, late 1800s, <laughs> 1800s, when flight started, if uh, if I'm wrong. I don't even know. His <clears> lesson <throat> with AJ. Someone well, like, it was back when I was I walked onto the field and said to the Wright brothers, "Well, it looks like you got something there." <gasps> I love anyway. it. You should do a show like that. Thanks. Oh, there you go. Last one <laughs> for more old jokes. Uh, let's get to some crowd control with uh, creeping everyone out here is artist Ching Ye, who gave us uh, something we all clearly wanted. What if Kirby was in the Dark Souls universe? Oh, no. Huh. Oh, my lordy. Oh. Wow. That is nightmare fuel. I wonder, <laughs> I wonder if Nintendo would ever do this, like license all their characters to be used in a really nightmarish hellscape horror game. I don't know. There would be something extra creepy about it, as that illustration clearly shows. I mean, just imagine yeah. like zombie Mario and zombie Luigi and you know, a whole bunch of like toadstools coming at you <laughs> that are demonically possessed or something. There would be something really off-putting about characters you recognize yeah. as being so cute and cuddly, totally. being the twisted alternate of no, that. I think people who, you know, grew up with the generation would love it, but I feel like young kids who just got into it would be traumatized. So I don't know. Like, imagine they're like, Mom, Mom, Dad, I want this new game from Nintendo, well, not realizing be, it's It would have to be like rated version. M for mature or something like that yeah. to protect the little ones. That's true. That's a cool the, idea. The I'd like to see ones. that happen. Nintendo, make it happen. All right, yeah. next up, Civilized Psycho decided to give Link and Zelda the face app treatment by making them look old. Speaking of old. <laughs> oh, Ooh. my. Not bad. It looks like kind of a cosplay episode of the Golden Girl. Yeah, I was gonna say, Link doesn't look like he maintained his boyish charm. No. It looks like they're, yeah, an old lesbian couple, if I may say. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. No, I'm of course saying. not. It's just kind of <laughs> what they look like. Yeah, uh, have you tried? We tried the Facebook app. I mean, Facebook app. Face app. I recently. saw you did that without my consent, so now the Russians have my the image Russians forever. Russians your face. I'm sorry. You're selling old people homes. The Russians. In Russia. Whatever. Sorry. I look old enough though. already. You look good. Thanks. All right, let's send you guys off with a display of both genius and hard work. Uh, hard work? <laughs> hard work. I'm getting old, Lisa. I forget all the right words and the letters and the combos. Uh, OG1T had a mission in Pokemon Go, and he delivered. Let's take a look at this. <laughs> and I would walk 500 miles, and I would walk 500 more, just to be the man who walks 1,000 miles to fall down at your door. Yeah, we need to work on that. <laughs> Oh my god. Do you remember that song or was oh. that before you were born? <laughs> I mean, I think it was before I was born, but I didn't know the song. <laughs> 93? Wait, what year did it come out? Do you know? Uh, I was a yeah. 93 baby, so. Early, not, it might have been like 94 was the Proclaimers. <gasps> I would have been around 10. <laughs> Well, it's popular enough that I know it, and that yes. was props to that person who made that, because that yeah. was brilliant. The nope. Ratatata part the is key, but right there. For a song all about walking, he's using the Pidgeotto. Oh, that's, that's true. Huh? And I would fly 500 <laughs> miles, I would fly. That would be the better version. More. Message him, let him know that you've yeah. adapted it. Okay. Well, all right. At least it's time for me to go to bed. It's well past my bedtime. It's true, I gotta Vance. go eat my uh, applesauce and uh, put in my uh, you know sleeping cap. All right. I'll, I'll tuck you, you in, Grant. I'll, I'll tuck just, you in. That's it for unmuted. Careful, here. don't fall. Your hip is sensitive. Oh! Uh, remember, you can always hit us up on our socials just to say hi or send us stuff to react to at Squad State. So we'll see you next time.